If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's why we've got to die to self. We have a special speaker here tonight. I'm just, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to introduce Apostle Kevin Bailey tonight. Would you give him a hand? Right, so nice. Let's give God one more hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody give him another hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. He died for you. He paid a price for you. He shed his blood for you. Amen. And through that power of the resurrection, it broke us free. Now it's a decision that you have to make to walk with him. Amen. Yeah. It's to say, just look at your neighbor and say decision time. Uh-huh, it's decision time tonight. Listen, though, you know, I'm only here for the ones that admit that there is a problem. Amen? And that's ready to face a problem. Listen, you cannot get free from something you do not acknowledge. Uh-huh. And ignoring a problem doesn't make it go away. Mm-hmm. Many of you have hurt family members, done all types of stuff. Maybe uh, you come from various backgrounds. Guess what? I don't care. Jesus paid a price for you. So, so you should have checked the shame and condemnation at the door. Yeah, check it at the door. Because guess what? The Bible says that you are a new creation in Christ. Amen. Old things have passed away, new things are to come. Is, is it a process? Yes. Now, you actually have to do something. Look at your neighbor and say, you have to do something. I'm going to tell you this on tonight. Everything is not a demon. We cannot cast out a lack of self-control, bad character, bad decisions. Uh-oh. No, well, wait a minute, Apostle. Jesus paid it all. Yes, he did. It doesn't give you a reason to do nothing. One of the things that I have found is that many believers are complacent. We become lazy. Yeah, because at, at one point, COVID did what it needed to do. It put us on the couch. It put us in our bedroom, and now we don't want to assemble. Amen? We don't want to come into the house of God. And come among the other believers so that you may be what? Edified and build up. Amen? Yeah, just say ouch and then amen. You look at your neighbor and say get to church. Yeah, this is a building that's made up of people. That guess what? That can encourage you. That can build you up. Amen? And this is why you come among the believers. Amen. This is not a recovery program. God's going to display his power on tonight. If you acknowledge that there is a problem, he's going to display his power on tonight. Amen. All right, let's pray. Everybody, let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for your precious word. Thank you for your precious people. I pray that you are bringing deliverance, breakthrough, and I thank you that your word is already anointed. Now demonstrate with power through the Holy Spirit to these your precious people and bring deliverance and breakthrough from their lives and let your truth expose uh, those hidden things, those deep things, those dark things in the heart and we give you praise for it. And I thank you that you will break every chain on tonight of bondage in the lives of your precious people. We give you praise for it now. And I declare that every spirit of condemnation, shame, pride, we break your power by the authority of Jesus' name. And we declare that you will walk in the newness and the power of the Holy Spirit. And we give you praise now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. Uh, Praise God for that. I was looking at that scripture in Luke chapter 9 and 23, but I got something. It's a place I want you to go because uh, I want to deal with uh, the topic of deliverance from addiction. 
and not just alcohol and drugs. Some are addicted to food and some get free from one thing and they go to another. I call it a uh, madness. It's madness. You know, you get free from this and then you replace it with that. And some, your mind needs to heal. Your mind needs to heal. It needs to be renewed through the word of God. Amen. Some of us, we got to get our mind right. Look at your neighbor and say, get your mind right. Yeah, some of us got to get our mind right. Some of, us are pl- some of us are playing those old memories, even some from childhood or some form of abuse or something that happened to us. Uh huh. And there is a, I'll tell you tonight, there is a young man or a young lady that God wants to rescue tonight. Amen. Do you think that he shed that blood through the power of the resurrection and the death, burial, and ascension? Amen. Do you think that that was for nothing? Listen, Confucius, Allah, all of them are still in the grave. There is only one that's not in the grave, and it's Jesus Christ. Amen. He's alive and he's within you and greater is he that is in you than he that operates in the world. Amen. So when that devil come to you and say, smoke or drink this, say, uh-uh, greater is he that is in me than he that operates in the world. Amen. It's called the devil a liar. Amen. Listen, you've got a choice. You have a choice. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do that. Amen. Let's get the pain with. So I'm going to teach, but guess what we want to do? We want to get to the root of the problem. We want to get to how you got there. And by me discoursing truth on tonight and teaching truth, hopefully we can let you see yourself into this and say, okay, it's me. Amen. I'm gonna, we want to get to how you got there. See, we can drive the demons out, but guess what? We've got to engage with you in how you got there so that you can stay free. All right, are y'all there? Yeah, and <clears throat> some of us, uh, we do something and then we say, oh, it's the devil. No, you had a decision. You have free will. You have free will. Oh, it's the devil. You ate too much or drank too much or you smoked that drink that so it's the devil. You had a choice. But you know why? Because there are some unhealed areas and some of you have a fragmented soul that needs to be healed. In the mind, will, and emotions. Are y'all, are y'all there with me tonight? Am I in the house? I'm stirring somebody's Kool-Aid tonight. I hope the devil gets upset and decides he's going to run out. He can run down here. And I'll say, get out of them. In Jesus' name. The only thing you have to lose tonight is your devils. I hope you brought them with you. That's the only thing you have to lose is the devils. Uh, That create, excuse me, that create that behavior. Amen. We're going to go to a text in just a little bit, but I want to, I want to talk about this. And because some, even when that pain was manifesting or the trauma or whatever it is happened, the young lady or young man stay there. And what we want to ask the Holy Spirit to do is go to that young man and go to that young lady and rescue you. You need to come on in the arms of Jesus tonight. If you're not saved, my question to you is, why aren't you? Give me a reason why you're not saved tonight. We'll go there in a minute. Give me a reason why you haven't received Jesus. Give me a reason. And why live a life of hell now and die and go to hell? Because if you don't receive Jesus, this is what's going to happen. Amen? We can't go through the motions. There's a God that is alive that we serve. That sent his son in a body to break the power of sin. Are y'all listening to me? So some may have to ask yourself, why are you still in sin if he broke the power of sin? You know why? Because you have a choice. (laughs) You have free will. I'm going to read you some scriptures in a little bit. I'm going to define addiction to you as we go in this. Everybody say deliverance 
from any form of addiction. Say deliverance from any form of addiction. Amen. An addiction is a habit forming need or weakness, obsession, attachment, craving, vulnerability, or, or subordination, or enslavement, or in compulsive and compelling physical or psychological behavior. Are y'all there? Uh oh, I mean, we in the house tonight. Let me read it to you again. An addiction is a habit forming need. Of course, none of us have those. We, I know we don't have those. Oh man, I would tell y'all my story. It'll take too long about the demons I had to be dealt, uh, get dealt with uh, for. I'll tell y'all that maybe later. All right. An addiction is a habit forming need, weakness, an obsession. An attachment, a craving, a vulnerability, a subordination, enslavement, compulsive, compelling, or physical or psychological behavior. How many of you know that it starts in the mind? Listen, the devil can't read your mind. Only God can. He created you. He deposits thoughts. It's up to you to pull them down. Uh-huh. It's up to you to pull them down. Say, nope, I refuse that. No, I refuse that. Nope, I refuse that. It's up to you to pull them down when he deposits them. Amen? Let me, let me finish here. So, in many cases, there is also a need to do, listen to me closely, or take or, take or use something Drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex addiction, and the list goes on. Listen to me closest. That enforces sin and turns you away from God. You don't have a disease. You don't have to stand and say, I'm a recovering addict. You're going to stand and say, I'm delivered. You're not always a recovering addict. Amen. I'm free from this bondage. I'm delivered from this bondage. I'm not always a recovering addict. And the sad reality is the devil, this is the last day for the devil to benefit off of your bondage. Some of them don't want you to come out of the bondage because they're benefiting from the bondage. Amen. Whether it be family, friends, some of us, we need to look at our circle of friends. Are y'all there? Uh huh. There's three things I want to touch before. We're going to go to some scriptures in a minute. Uh, Pastor Allen, you let me know how much time I got, and, and I'll stay within that time. Amen? All right. Guess what? Listen. So we don't want to enforce sin. And the reality is that there is, there's uh, three levels of um, sin. Well, transgression and iniquity. Transgression and iniquity. Uh huh. And sin. Sin is just flat out rebellion. Rebellion. It means rebellion. All right. Transgression is violating the standard of God, striving towards it, but violating the standard of God. And some of us with iniquity is twisted thinking or behaviors. Twisted thinking or behaviors or perverted behavior. It's iniquity. Are y'all there? Let's go. All right. So we talked about how it enforces sin, but there are three components I want to identify, identify today to shame the devil. All right. One of them is in, in how, uh, well, three forms of addiction. Okay. Three forms of addiction. Number one, substance addiction. So you know, you know why that, uh, that person that you know or you can't get free? Because guess what? And some of you need the deliverance from the spirit of pharmacia. This is medication by magic. And what those drugs do is alter your mind. Uh-huh. They alter your mind. So we need to get you free from it. So you know what happens? 
Have you ever seen a dog that sees must be gone crazy? Some of us are chasing our tail. We're in a circle. We're chasing our tail. We're chasing that same high from the experience when we first did it, but it burned your brain up so you cannot get that high anymore. So you keep chasing it. Are y'all listening to me? How about chasing Jesus like that? How about getting high off the Holy Spirit? Smoke a joint through the power of the Holy Ghost. And you'll have no hangover. Drink some alcohol. You'll drink some alcohol connected with the Holy Ghost. It doesn't give you a hangover. It gives you an anointing. He gives you power to face the enemy when he comes to you. Amen. How about taking something tonight that doesn't give you a hangover? Are oh, y'all listen to me? And it's the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Substance addiction. Number two, behavior addiction. It is to sex, um, uh, sex addiction, video gaming. Some, when they are depressed, they go shopping. We're going to address that depression demon. We go shopping and then buy the stuff that we want. This is a spendthrift demon. And we need to address it tonight. We go and buy all kind of stuff. We're in debt because we're depressed. We're trying to feel better. We're trying to medicate that pain. Uh-huh. We're trying to medicate that pain. It's called spendthrifting. Amen. And it, and it launches us into a depression. All right. Are y'all there? All right. The third point I want to make is impulse, impulse addiction. Listen to me closely. Say impulse addiction. Impulse addiction, it deals with the emotions. Are y'all there? Uh huh. It deals with the emotions and it's also a control disorder where you can't sometimes control your emotions. So sometimes the demon manifests in outbursts, anger, uh, forms of rebellion. Or, uh, who am I talking? Amen. Malice, rage. It's a murdering spirit. And you need to get the freedom from it today. Amen. This is impulse addiction. So impulse. I'm going to go to some triggers in just a second. I'm going to talk about that. But listen to me closely. Yeah, listen, the only thing that should trigger you is the power of the word because it heals and delivers you from all destruction. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to do something. Yeah, the word heals and delivers you from all destruction. Do you, gotta, do you believe it? Yes, you got to take action. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Let's go to our first scripture. 1 Corinthians 6 and 12. I'm going to read this in the Amplified. 1 Corinthians 6 and 12. Some of us, some of us saying that, then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 12. Some of us said, oh, it's a trigger. I can't help it. Some of us got the, I can't help it. Are y'all there? I can't help it. And then, and then you want people to say, be yourself. But Jesus said, uh, no, not, you don't be yourself. Die to yourself and follow me. There's a cost with following Jesus. Why would you want to uh, put up, pay up the cost for following Jesus than buying alcohol or drugs? You're not going to have a hangover. What you're going to do is grow. And what you're going to do is become mature in the stature and the nature of Christ. Amen. Let's look at this. First uh, Corinthians chapter six, and we're going to go back. I'm going to read this to you. And this is connected with the impulsive behavior. Let me get over there. Boy, if y'all only knew how the devil has fought me, Lord help to get over here. He, he didn't want me over here, but devil, I'm here and it's over. <laughs> Everybody say your time is up. Amen. Listen, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 12, it says, listen to me closely. Everything is permissible for me, but not all things. See, this is talking about free will. Are y'all listening to me? 
This is your free will. Everything is permissible for me. This is the apostle Paul sharing this, but not all things are beneficial. Mm. Yeah, let that sink in. Y'all chew on that a little bit. Don't swallow yet. Just keep chewing on it. Amen. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything and brought under its power, allowing it to control me. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and 12. Amen. See, within there is self-will. Look at your neighbor and say it's decision time. Let's go over here to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. See, see, there is a process to this dying to self. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, let's look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and let's look at verse 8. Verse 8. Will you there just say, Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians, or is it first? Let me, let me go back. No, I don't want that one. Let me go back. It's first. Let me go back further and back to first Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter four. Let me look at that. I think I wrote it down wrong. I just say amen. Let's go over here. First Corinthians four. And let's look at this. Yeah. Amen. Let's look at this in verse 8. It says here, you behave as if you are already filled with spiritual wisdom and need of nothing more. Already you have become rich in spiritual gifts, but you in your conceit, y'all see this? Have ascended your thrones and become kings without us. And how I wish that it were true that you did reign as kings so that we might reign with you. Y'all see this? Mm. For I think God has exhibited us apostles at the end of the line like men sentenced to death and paraded as prisoners in procession because we have become spectacle to the world, a show in the world's amphitheater, both to angels and men. We are regarded as fools for Christ, but you are so wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are highly esteemed. But we are dishonored. Y'all see this? Mm. Yeah, just say, mm, okay. We work, look what it says in verse 11. The present hour, we are both hungry and thirsty, and we are continually poorly dressed, and we are roughly treated and wander homeless. But the work, listen to me, for our living, working hard with our own hands, when we are reviled and verbally abused and we bless, when we are persecuted, we take it patiently and endure. Amen? <laughs> Y'all quiet tonight. Uh, just say, just say amen. Y'all quiet tonight. All right, so let's, let's, let's talk about this. We're going to dig in just a little before that. I'm going to give us some scriptures at the end. But guess what? Some of us are returning to the vomit. Some of you may throw up tonight. That doesn't mean deliverance because after that you have to change the behavior and you have to change your mind. Amen. You might cough, some may yawn. Amen. Okay. But that doesn't mean deliverance. Amen. Because if, when you get a measure of deliverance, it brings transformation. People can see the evidence of it and it brings change. Mm-hmm. And those things that you couldn't do at first, you find it, it'll become easy. And even some within your family might break through. I remember praying for a lady whose uh, son was out there on addiction. He calls her, telling her he can't get off the ground. We're praying for her. We're online. And that he can't get up and he's just throwing up. He's sick. He don't know what's wrong with it. He goes to the hospital and nothing is wrong. But what we did was break the curse of addiction. Started from his grandfather. And he started manifesting and going through deliverance. When we prayed for her. She struggled with it too. But listen, you're going to have to assess those friends. You're going to have to assess those places that you know you go that trigger you. And so when we talk about that, and some of you do, you, you need to throw up spiritually. Are y'all there? And you need to so we can see what you've been eating. 
Usually when somebody pukes a vomit, you can see what they, oh, Pastor Lisa, I see you over there. <laughs> you can see what they've been eating. And it doesn't mean that they delivered, but you can see what they have been eating. Uh-huh. What have you been eating? Sexual sin, gaming, too much coffee. Some are going from one problem or the, or the very thing that makes us sick. Alcohol, drugs, chasing that high, and pretending. But if you're in Christ, he calls you uh, to be hidden in Christ with God. So it's no way, are y'all listening to me? If you're to be hidden in Christ with God, uh, do you think that Jesus would uh, stick a needle in his arm or smoke a joint or drink some alcohol? If you're hidden in Christ with... <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Proverbs 26 and 11. Let's look at this. Proverbs, well, I actually want to read it in 2 Peter 2 and 22 first. And you just write down 2 Peter. It's similar. Uh, write down uh, Proverbs 26 and 11. Let me go to 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 22. Amen. Amen. And uh, first I'm going to look at, um, first I'm going to look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13. Then we're going to go to 2 Peter let me stay with my notes. Amen. Let me pull my other ones up. Oh, I got these. All right. Amen. Just say amen. amen. I got something for you tonight. The Holy Ghost got something for you tonight. And it sure ain't a joint in alcohol or whatever it is. It, it, it sure ain't that. I want you to get high on the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want you to get high on the Holy Ghost because whenever you get high on the Holy Ghost, remember what I said, there's no hangover. There's no hangover. Amen. Let me read this. In the first uh, uh, epistle of Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1 and 13, it says, listen to me closely, so prepare your minds, say prepare your minds, for action. Say, prepare your minds for action. Are y'all there? Be completely sober. Be completely sober. Eh, I know. And, and in spirit, steadfast, self-discipline. Do y'all know that self-control is a fruit of the spirit? If you're a believer, you should possess self-control. You should possess dif discipline. Amen? Self-discipline. Let me finish reading. Spiritually and morally alert. Spiritually and morally alert. Does it say anything about the flesh? And boy, we like that flesh. Ugh. You know, sin, listen, sin is like a credit card. It tastes good when you do it and feels good, but you pay later. And that's what we want to deal with tonight. We want to deal with the damage that the devil has done. Amen? We want to deal with that damage. We want to deal with that young man. We want to deal with that young woman that said, I'm in Christ. I'm, I'm saved, I'm, you know. But I know something is not right. I commend you. Most people, listen, even if you go to a medical doctor, if you don't tell them what's wrong with you, they can't treat you. Hello? You got to tell them the symptoms. You're going to tell Jesus the symptoms tonight and you're going to break free. Because, listen, we can't get you free from something you don't acknowledge, something you don't accept, and something that you do not give the Holy Spirit access to. The Holy Spirit needs access. He needs you to accept it. You'll never get free from something you don't accept or acknowledge. It's a, say it's a problem. <laughs> say I won't return to that vomit. Amen. Second Peter, let's go to Second Peter 2 and 22. Second Peter 2 and 22. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this. The things spoken of in the true proverb has happened to them. The dog returns to his own vomit 
and a soul is washed only to wallow again in the mirror. This is connected with dirt. Yeah, yeah, I'm reading in the Amplified. Why do we keep returning to the very thing that's made us sick? Why do we continue returning to the addiction? Why do we continue returning to uh, uh, all forms of addiction, sex, gaming, uh, you know, and some of you need to get free from escapism. You're playing a video game trying to escape. You're drinking and smoking trying to escape the, the real issues of the problem. And you're returning to that very thing that has made you sick. You need to throw up in the spirit. You're returning to that same dirt, that filth. The very thing that got you into bondage. The question is why? There's too many unresolved issues. Some of you have unresolved trauma. So it said, I need nicotine. It's, it's a calm me down. What you need is the Holy Ghost. What you need is deliverance. Yeah. What you need is to make a decision. Amen. What you need is to possess self-control. What you need is to make better decisions. What you need is to get rid of those friends that encourage the behavior. Get rid of those friends. Oh, y'all stay with me. Why are we returning to the, the vomit? The same thing that has made us sick over and over again. This, this defines addiction. Addiction is habit forming, a weakness. It, this is what addiction boils down to. It's an obsession. It's an attachment. It's an attachment. It's a craving. Are y'all listening to me? It's demonic appetites. I'm going to read that to y'all in just a minute. It's, it's demonic appetites. And some of us, we have condemnation. We have shame. We have guilt. And some are heavy because of it. Heaviness, depression, mental disorders, some of you need therapy. And listen, you can get the deliverance, but some of you need therapy. And bring the report to Pastor Lisa and let us just, uh, just send it to me and I'll identify the demons. You know how many people I've told uh, to go to, account, go to counseling, go to therapy. They bring me the report, sign here that I, I can look at this and see it. Okay. And I said, okay. So what do you want to do about it? Apostle, what do you <laughs> what do you want to do about it? What do you want us to do? What do you want to do about it? I said, oh, you know, they're paranoid, they're scared, they, uh, they won't sleep with the lights on. You know, this is the, they identify it for from a medical aspect. Thank God for medical doctors. And if you've been diagnosed for something and they can't find it through science, you have a demon. You have a demon. Yeah, if they can't find the problem through medical science, it's a demon. Yeah. Why? Because he cast out spirits with this what word in Matthew 18, Matthew 8, 15 through 17. Now just go read it later. Yeah, and some of us are bound in that area, but we want to deal with the feelings of condemnation. We want to deal with the guilt, the shame tonight. It's over. No longer will you carry those heavy burdens or those weights. Amen? Say it's over. It's over. Jesus said in Matthew 11 and 28, Jesus said this. And Matthew, go into the New Testament in Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 and 28. And if he told them, to, if he told you to bring them to him, why do you come back to pick them up? Well, let's look at this. Matthew chapter 11. <laughs> Y'all stay with me. I can laugh at the devil and have fun. You know, there's a level of freedom you get to, you can laugh. And when he comes for you, I have no idea what happened to me this morning. The devil said, we got to stop this. We don't want you over here. But look what he says. So my question is why, if you're not connected with Christ, why are you without him? He said to bring, oh, let's read it. Matthew 11 and 28. Come to me all who are tired or weary or heavily burdened. Amen. 
Look at, look at this say, by religious rituals. This is play acting, hypocrisy. Listen, wearing a $1,500 suit doesn't deliver you from demons. Wearing red bottoms don't deliver you from demons or Macy dresses. You still have a demon. It just hasn't been dealt with. You still have a demon. <laughs> that doesn't take care of the issue. Amen. Outward appearance means absolutely nothing. Amen. You can look the part and you're really fooling yourself. Let me finish reading this. Let me finish reading this. That provide no peace and I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. That word salvation in this text means soteria, which means deliverance from your soul, mind, will, and emotions. That's the word salvation. Yeah. Some need deliverance from the molestation of demons. We're being molested many times, attacked in our dreams. Mm -hmm. The heavens won't open for us we have a trouble with those finances. The devil, don't, the devil don't curse the finances. And it's because you elected to give that, what is, which is God's, to the liquor store, the drug dealer. It just put a curse on your finances is all it does. And guess what? You, you keep on wanting that thing. You, you, some, some are killing for it. It's, it's so out of control, they're killing for it. Fentanyl, opioids. Some are dying and having heart attacks and they're in their 30s and 20s from fentanyl. Amen. I thank God for Pastor Allen and his wife doing this ministry. Many people don't uh, do that, that jail ministry, I do the prison, the killers, the rapists, the murderers. And will run up to me and say, who do you think you are? You know, and, and <laughs> I don't need to be saying that. You're in prison for life, but your soul doesn't have to be. Now come here. Pastor Lisa, she over here. Yeah. Yeah, your soul don't have to be. You pushing me down. You knock me down. No, the Holy Ghost. Now get back up. Now give them up. A few deep breaths. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Your soul doesn't have to be in prison. I'm almost there. And then we're going we're gonna to do some renunciations and we're going to pray. But I want to talk about those triggers. It may be it's an environment. And let me tell you this. Your senses are desensitized. They desensitize you and they are enemies of your faith. Let that sink in. Touch, taste, feel. See, you know, that flesh feels good. But guys, uh, see, hear, what you see, what you hear, those senses will deceive you. Uh-huh. When you look at TV, all they show is a beer commercial and, and, and food. Uh-huh. And you say, oh, man, today, oh. I want to tell nobody at the church, I would like a cold beer. No, what you need is deliverance. That's what you need from those demonic appetites and those cravings. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 19 and 20. And God calls you an enemy of Christ when you go to those appetites. Let's go to Philippians. Go to Philippians. Y'all stay with me. Philippians chapter 3. I pray that God bless somebody tonight. Amen. The word is already anointed. Let's go to Philippians. Uh, give me just a second to get over there. Yeah, that devil uh, did not want me. Oh, man. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Just say amen. Philippians chapter 3. Boy, he didn't want me over here, but I'm here. Just everybody say deliverance time. <laughs> That's Pastor Lisa's favorite. <laughs> Don't be teasing me about. 
It's Kevin Bailey from the great. <laughs> Amen. That's my sister. I love her. All right, let's go. Look what it says. Look what it says in Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And let's read it, verse 18. It says, for there are many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears who live as enemies. Y'all see this? Of the cross, rejecting and opposing his way of salvation. Y'all see this? I'm reading it amplified. Whose fate is destruction. This is the one that refuses to receive Christ. And guess what? You do not have a valid reason for not being in Christ. You don't have a valid reason. If, if, if I ask you and you tell me, I, I just want, you know, listen, you know why people don't want to receive Christ? The, the only religion that requires you to change instead of do rituals and religious acts is coming to Jesus. That's why the name is hated so much. When you come to Jesus, you have to change. That's why they hate the way of salvation. Look at verse 19. Whose fate is destruction, whose God is their belly. Y'all see this? <laughs> I'm pulling them into the deep tonight. We're pulling y'all in the deep tonight. It says, whose God is their belly, their worldly appetite, their sensuality, their vanity, and whose glory is in their shame. Y'all see this? Vanity, pride, ignorance. Come on, let's get started. <laughs> sensuality. Who focus their mind on earthly who, who focus their mind on a joint, <laughs> who focus their mind on alcohol, who focus their mind on worldly possessions. Do you know I've talked to some of the most unhappy, it's not wrong with having wealth and possessions, but I've talked to some of the most miserable people Said, you know, apostle, I will give everything. I said, give it, the kingdom needs it, to be happy. I said, you can't buy happiness. You need an encounter with Jesus. Let me pray for you. I want to give you a check. Forget it. Keep your check. Let me pray for you. Uh, come over to the meeting. No. They, they won't come. I'll do anything to be happy. But you know what? Even some of you may have said that. Happiness depends on a circumstance or a situation. What you need is joy. Amen. That is connected with the Lord. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. What you need is joy. This joy that has been given to us, the world, what does it say? Can't take it away. Amen. You need joy. Oh, that's boring. Oh, you know, apostle, you go all these places. Uh, you know, it's boring being a Christian. How can you do this? I said, I'll love it. I'll do it till it my, it's my time. Because I appreciate that great sacrifice through that shed blood and those 39 lashes. Amen. Amen. And uh, just think, if one of Jesus had a listen to Judas, we'd have no hope. I'm going to take y'all to that, to that tomorrow. We'd have no hope if he had a listen to Judas. Uh-huh. If he had a listen to Peter, I mean. Just imagine if he had listened to Peter. There'd be no hope for us. He said, oh, no, not you. you. You're the master. You can't go to the cross. That would have aborted the mission and plan. We have no eternal hope if he hadn't have done it. And he did it for you. For all of the world. Every race, every ethnicity. For all of the world. And I, I can't even imagine living without him. I mean, what am I going to do? I'm never going back to the world. It doesn't offer anything. Let me tell you this. When I was in the world, guess what you do? A drink, party, hang out with people that don't like you, give gifts at the holiday, and everybody's jealous of you. You know them very well. They work on a job. They stab you in the back because you're making more money than them. 
I mean, these are just a few of the things with the world. What would you go back to? That's vomit. That's the very thing that's going to make you sick. Why would you ever leave Jesus? Leave him to go where? Besides heaven. Where, where, where are you going to go? The world offers you absolutely nothing. Amen. Amen. It says earthly and temporal things, but we are different because our citizenship is in heaven. And from there, we eagerly await the coming of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's different. We live in a world, but we don't have to be of the world. We live in a world, but we don't have to be of the world. We don't have to do what the world is doing. And just because something is approved culturally or from a law doesn't make it right. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you know the United States kills more babies than any nation? 20 million. Do you know that they incarcerate the most people worldwide? The U.S. does. Do you know that they're the fattest, the greediest, and the most prideful? The U.S. That, that lie that they told you, the land of the free, the home of the brave, that's the biggest lie. Yeah, just say amen. amen. That's why many are in bondage. They're benefiting off of it. And they offer no, you no hope. Your only hope can only be found in Jesus Christ. The world offers you nothing. God help us. We got to get rid of those appetites associated with addiction. Your belly can no longer be your God. And this is connected to fleshy behavior, carnal desires, and appetites. That word in there, that word belly. When you look at the text, you cannot... Continue to say you walk with Christ, but be in the flesh. He said to what? Crucify the flesh. Amen. Let me share this scripture in 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. And some will say, well, Apostle, if you have not desire friends, be friendly. Yeah, Christian friends. Believers. And and you shouldn't even want to marry even an unbeliever. Why? Why would you marry the world? And why would you connect with somebody that you can't talk about Jesus to? Why? Why? And why would you be connected with someone that's on death row? Let that sink in. They're on death row. They're waiting to die and go to hell because they refuse Jesus. They oppose this way of salvation. First Corinthians, let's go to first Corinthians and then we're going to go to Ephesians 5. How much time? Okay. Uh, Okay. All right. First Corinthians chapter 15. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse uh, 33. Oh, yeah, and we're going to read 34. Yeah, we're going to read 33 and 34. First Corinthians 33. Look what it says. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. You know what? So, in other words, who you hang around is who you become. Yeah. Whatever environment that you are in, you will become that. Have you ever seen two people, two men and women, they hang around each other so much their mannerisms are the same? Yeah. Because what you hang around, you become. In most cases. Not all, but in some cases. Amen. Let's look at verse 34. It says in here, be sober-minded, be sensible, wake up from your stupor. Say, wake up. Say, wake up from your spiritual stupor as you ought and stop sinning 
For some of you have no knowledge of God. You are disgracefully ignorant of him and ignore his truths. I say this to your shame. Y'all see this? Oh boy, yes and oh my God. Just say ouch and amen. <laughs> uh-huh. We have to live by this. This should be your constitution. Yes, it's the constitution of the United States, but we have to live by the word of God. It's the only thing that's true, infallible, inerrant, correct, everlasting, accurate. It's the only thing is the truth. So we have to live by it. Amen. How many is ready to live by it? Say it's over. I'm ready to live by this word. Yep, the trouble is people tell you, be yourself, but they don't call up, count up to cost with being a disciple. Jesus didn't say that. He said to count up to cost. He didn't say that. Yeah, he said count up to cost. Amen. So listen, I want to challenge you to go and assess your friends. Go and assess the environments. I know some of them make excuses. Oh, yeah, I'm witnessing to them, Apostle. I'm, I'm, I'm witnessing to them. Yeah. I'm witnessing to them. How many beers do you have over there? All the game is on. Hey, you know, come on by, Apostle. You know. I've had them family members say, you know, your problem is you need to just have a beer. No, thank you. That's one of the demons I got free from because it's all the world offers to medicate that pain. And there was some pain that I had to have addressed and I had to be seen by a believer that understands their authority, that will exercise their authority. I had to be seen. Some of us need to be seen by a specialist because uh, everybody that's in, are y'all there? <laughs> everybody that is in the church is not responding to treatment. Mm. Everybody's not responding. Uh huh. So you know how you keep going back to that doctor and saying, "Well, we got we got to give you something stronger. We got we got to give you this." But the reality is, you need an encounter with Jesus. That's what you need. What you need is an encounter. Yeah, so that you will start responding to Jesus. Amen. So you respond to treatment. Amen. Just a couple things I'm going to give you that when those triggers uh, manifest or those appetites, the first thing you need to do is prayer and meditation. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, that devil will tell you, don't pray. God doesn't hear you anyway, and that's a lie, especially if you're in Christ. That's a lie. If there is iniquity, he doesn't hear you in Psalm 66 and 18. If something is perverted, you're hiding something. Never hide anything for Jesus. Amen? Tell him the truth he knows anyway. Amen. This is how you break free. Proverbs 28, 13 says that to confess our sins, what do we do with sin? Confess and repent. That means we change that. We confess it. We change the behavior. The Bible says in Proverbs 28 and 13 that you won't prosper if you don't. That's what we do with sin. We don't make a habit of being in sin. We don't form uh, habits and make excuses for them. That's number one. Number two, uh, identify the triggers. Identify the triggers. Are you out there? Uh -huh. Identify the triggers. Identify those appetites when they try to set in. Sometimes we're heavy, we're feeling depressed, we're worried. Here, here it comes. Oh, just drink a 30-pack. You'll feel better. Smoke this, drink this. That's what the devil will tell you. To get you back into what? The vomit. All right. Number three. Number three. 
All right? Consider deliverance ministry, but also get therapy. Now, we're not recommending you to a psychologist. Well, because if you got some demons, I'm not. I'm just going to tell them to go in Jesus' name. But therapy helps to you to talk the problem out and you will possibly get to the root of the problem. Just bring the report to Pastor Lisa and she'll say, okay. She'll call me and say, oh, this is a demon. It's a demon. It's a demon. Okay, well, that's a reality. That's okay. Well, okay. All right, we're going to deal with these. Sometimes seeing it in black and white helps you to really, it to sink in and to get it. Something is wrong. It helps you to see something is wrong. So therapy doesn't mean that you're weak. You're a weak believer. You're doing therapy to get stronger. Amen. So it's very important that you show um, separation too. That, that you show disgust, utter rejection, separation from these habits, these behaviors. They should discuss you. Because the power of that Holy Ghost is working. Some may need to fast to break it. Some don't come out except through prayer and fasting. Some may need to fast. And then after you do, go and get help. If you do self-deliverance and they don't get out, then go and find help. Guess what I do? And all the years I've been doing this in every nation I've been in, I still get delivered as much as needed every year. Because sometimes the devil hides stuff from us and one of the biggest tricks is that he say, you're doing ministry, you're okay, but it's a lie. Hide behind ministry, hide behind the work of the kingdom, hide behind people, hide behind, are y'all listening to me? Because no, you're supposed to be hidden in Christ. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. You're supposed to be hidden in Christ. So when the devil comes for you, all he should see is Christ stirring in you. Through your behavior, through your attitude and your actions. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, let's go over there. Let me pull my point up here. Y'all stay with me. We're almost there. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And let's look at verse 3. Well, actually, let's look at verse 2. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. I'm going to read it to you and amplify it. Uh-huh. Y'all ready? Amen. Set your mind and keep focus habitually on the things above the heavenly things. Not on things that are on the earth, which have only temporal value. For you died. Y'all see this? Say die to self. Hey, you need to because God only exalts humility, not pride. Let it sink in. Let's go. For you died to this world and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. Verse 4 says, when Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So put to death. Let's look at verse 5. Look at this. Uh, don't you just love the word of God? <laughs> because of the, look what it says. So put to death and deprive of power the evil longings. Y'all see this? This is connected to addiction. Y'all see this? A longing, a craving, a desire. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, let's go. Of your earthly body with this sensual, self-centered instincts. Many of your problems is you're self-centered. Some have the woe is me mentality. Some are very selfish. And do you know when you struggle with addiction, you only think about yourself? We have children that we have let down. We have family we have let down. We have friends we have let down because we only think about ourselves. 
me, myself, and I. But I'm going to tell you it's a demon. And you, yourself, and I need to be dealt with. Yeah. It needs to be dealt with. That self-centeredness, that vanity. Yeah, let me finish reading. Immorality, impurity, sinful passion, evil desire, and greed, which is a kind of idolatry. Because it replaces your devotion to God. So some need to break free from idolatry. Anything you put before God is idolatry. Amen? Uh, man, they have some of you renounced that tonight. Let me finish up. Let me go to my, let me go to a couple more scriptures here. Uh, let me go to, let's go to uh, uh, the book of Ephesians. Let's go to a book of Ephesians. Now, listen, you won't always suffer. God will bring restoration. But it doesn't excuse you from confronting the issues. All right, quick question. Did anybody's height, weight, hands, or eyes or ears change when they came to Christ? Because you worked on it and lost the weight. Amen? Amen? Did it change when you came to the altar and gave your life to Christ? Did, did it change? Anything physically about you besides the transformation that should have happened, but the reality is that it didn't. You had to put the work in. So when you do the deliverance, you have to maintain what we're going to do tonight. Because it's not just going to change. I'm in Christ, that's it. I, I don't have to do it. And that laziness and that slowful demon needs to be dealt with. It has plagued the body of Christ too long. Amen? Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Y'all go over there with me. I want to read this to y'all. I, I, I just want to teach you tonight. Amen? Ephesians chapter 5. And let's look at this. Yeah. Uh, actually, let's move up. So let's read verse 9, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 9. Are y'all there? Someone said, oh my God, this is. <laughs> verse 9, it says, for the fruit, the effect, the result of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Y'all see this? Yeah. Let's read verse 10. Amen. Just stay with me. Trying to learn by experience what is pleasing to the Lord and letting your lifestyles. Uh, Y'all see this? You know, if you can, if, if you just can't help it that day, you know, is that what it say? Letting your lifestyles be examples of what is most acceptable to myself. See, that's that selfish spirit. No, it's to him. That's in capital letters, to God. What's most acceptable to, to who? Him. Your behavior expresses gratitude to God for your salvation. Y'all see this? Do not participate in the worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness, but instead expose them by exemplifying personal integrity, moral, courage, and godly character. Y'all see this? Character is what you do when no one's around. It's called, it's called integrity. I'm just go and read Proverbs 11 and verse 3. I don't have time to go over there. But character is what you do when nobody's around, when they're not looking. Listen, if he told you to go into your closet and pray in secret and he will ward you openly, you don't think that if whatever you do in secret, you will pay for whatever you sow, you go, you sow of the flesh, you reap up. Yeah. That's the law of the land. Look at your neighbor and say no more secrets. Even if you don't tell nobody, you better tell God. If you don't tell nobody about your issues, you better tell them. If you don't, he'll expose you. 
Tell him. Go and talk to him and tell him he's your father. Let's go. For it is disgraceful even to mention things that such people practice in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light of God's precepts. For it is light that makes everything visible. Uh, for it is light that makes everything visible. And that light is connected with Christ. It's that light that makes everything visible. I know y'all quiet. Hey, amen. Stay with me. I got a few other things. Amen. I had a few other scriptures I'm going to go to. Let's go to the book of, uh, let's go to the book of uh, Titus uh, chapter 2, last ones. Titus chapter 2 and verse 12. I, I pray that, that God is blessing you tonight. We want to keep you too late tonight, but we're going we gonna to get this dealt with. So when you show up tomorrow, there's some breakthrough. There's definite change. Titus chapter 2. Let's look at this. Titus chapter 2 and verse 12. Y'all see this? Let's look at verse 11, the verse up above it. Yeah, let's look at verse 11. Thank you. Thank you back there. All right, let's look at this. It says, for the remarkable undeserved grace of God brings salvation has appeared to all men. Y'all see that? It teaches us to reject ungodliness and worldly immoral desires to live sensible, upright, and godly lives, lives with the purpose that reflects spiritual maturity in this present age. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to mature. Amen. You, you got to mature. Amen. Let's go to Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs 23 and 26, and then Proverbs 25 and 28. And then we're going to do some renunciations. Amen. Yeah, let's give Jesus a hand cap of praise, though, before I get to this text. Amen. Proverbs chapter 23, not me, Jesus. Amen. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. When you get over there, just say amen. All right. Let's look at this. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. These are eye opening, aren't they? Yeah, just say amen. It says, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes delight in my ways. My son, give you my heart. Also, now that's singular, but sons, S-O-N-S, refers to both sexes. Amen? But my son, give me your heart and let your eyes delight in my ways. Proverbs 25 and verse 28 says this. And then we're going to do some renunciation. It says, like a city, like some of us. Some of us are like a city. Are y'all there? Y'all getting tired? I'm almost done. Like, let me, let me share it again. Like a city that is broken down and without walls, leaving it unprotected. Because even a door is going to let things in and out. I remember Paul saying in the book of Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9, there's an effectual open door, but there's an adversary. Uh -huh. Many a times that adversary is in that door, that opening, trying to hinder your breakthrough. But you see this? Some are unprotected. Some are unprotected. You're like a city with broken down walls. In biblical times, the enemy could get into the city if the walls weren't high enough or they weren't, you know, stabilized. 
Some are that way. And some of us got open doors. You know how things come in? Listen to me closely. It depends on the time of the year with flies or insects. If you open the door, they're going to come in. You don't have a screen door. <laughs> you don't have that protection of the Holy Ghost. Amen. They're going to come in. And sometimes we open doors and not realize it. And the flies, the mosquitoes, various bugs, for that season, we're in different seasons of our life sometimes, and we open doors. And here comes the mosquitoes, here comes the flies, because it's that time of the year. It's just like addiction. When it gets a certain time of the year, this is what I refer to as a time-release curse. When we get to a certain, we start struggling real bad a certain time of the year. Uh-huh. Yeah. And reliving those memories, reliving those things that have bound us for so long. We, we said, I, 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 somehow I got to escape. But we're like a city that is broken down and without walls, leaving it unprotected. Is a man who has, listen to me closely, no self-control over his spirit. Am I reading? Y'all y'all see this? So, so listen. Is a man who has no self-control over his spirit and sets himself up for trouble. See what happens when you lack self-control? And self-control is what? A fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5.22. Say it's decision time tonight. Say devil it's over. Say I've hold enough truth to where I'm going to make a change. Amen. So I'm going to do this renunciation. Uh, Pastor Allen, do you want me to give it to you? Or I'm going to do this. Can I do this renunciation? Okay. All right. I, I want all of you, you pay attention. I want you to repeat this after me. All right? And if you're super spiritual and you've been through nothing, you don't have to. All right? I want y'all to repeat this after me. And some of you from the pain and the trauma need to forgive. Some need to be forgiven. Some of you have unresolved offense. And it's keeping you bound. Sador. Listen, I believe you. I know they hurt you but it's time to release them tonight. I know they hurt you. I know they traumatize you. And we're not saying that it's okay. Listen, I believe you. Some of them, those devils came into bedrooms when we were children and violated us. So we're trying to medicate that pain. We just never got past it. Some have a hatred for me and because of it. You have to release it. It's bitterness. Man hating spirits. This is why many go to alternative lifestyles. I don't know I'm talking to. The Holy Spirit is telling me to say that. But listen. It's time to declare war against it tonight. And whatever that addiction is, I want you to renounce it. Repeat this after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I come out of agreement with every curse through words by ancestors, former lovers, family members, friends, or relatives. Say no longer where those words affect me. I break the curses in the name of Jesus. Say I come out of agreement with every sin, every contract, covenant oath in Jesus name said today is broken say Holy Spirit I give you permission to enter in and to heal the fragmented soul say I renounce sickness infirmity and disease from unresolved trauma in Jesus name Say, I release the trauma and say, I forgive all those who've offended me, 
who have hurt me, say I forgive them. Say I renounce bitterness, resentment, hatred, self-hatred, procrastination, and the cycles and habits of every addiction. Say, Holy Spirit, I give you permission to break them. Say now, say every chain must be broken in Jesus' name. Say, I renounce eating disorders, love of food, gluttony, or escapism to drugs, alcohol, uh, caffeine, and any other addiction to sex, to gaming, and anything else, Lord, that we may have missed. Say, I renounce it in the name of Jesus. Say, I release and I forgive myself. Say, I forgive myself. I renounce the shame, the condemnation, the guilt. It say, it wasn't my fault. Say, I forgive my parents. I forgive my, I forgive my grandparents and any other ancestor who have hurt me or offended me. Say, I renounce all witchcraft, all cult of involvement. Say, I renounce seeking the supernatural outside of the will of God. Say, I renounce Satan and his demons. And I declare that I hate him and his demons. Say, I break free from childhood hurts, pains, traumas. Say, Lord, erase my mind with the blood of Jesus. Erase these demonic recorders that continue to play in my mind. Place your hands on your head. Say, Lord, renew my mind. Deliver me from those pains, those hurts in Jesus' name. Say, I call the rebuke of the Lord to every demonic recorder, every demonic voice that is hindered and plaguing me. Say, shut up and leave now. In Jesus' name, say, no longer will it affect me. In the name of Jesus, say, all forms of witchcraft or the occult, I renounce it. Every form, say, I'm in covenant with God. Say, I break these demonic covenants in the name of Jesus. Say, I renounce every form a sensuality or perversion in my bloodline. Say, I break the curse on my mother's side, father's side, back to 60 generations in Jesus' name. Say, I renounce physical illness, mental illness, uh, uh, psychic disorders. I break the power and I loose my mind I loose my spirit from all demonic attacks in Jesus' name. Say, I receive the mind of Christ. Say, my mind is stayed on Christ, for it keeps me in perfect peace. Say, Holy Spirit, come now. Heal me in my body, mind, and spirit. Because your word says... That I should be whole in mind, body, and spirit. In Jesus' name. Say, I release the heaviness. I release the despair. And I release all burdens, false responsibilities, false burdens. Say, I renounce it. In Jesus' name. Say, I renounce people-pleasing, hypocrisy, play-acting. Say, I renounce it. And Lord, I give you permission to break me free from it. In Jesus' name. Say, the poor has cried out to him. And he breaks every chain. Say, Lord, break every chain that is bound and hinder me tonight. In the name of Jesus. Break my family free. In the name of Jesus. Break my children free. From all history and, uh, and curses, 
of addiction, every form. Lord, you know what they are. Break them free in Jesus' name. Say, I renounce third and fourth generational curses of addiction in the name of Jesus. Say, it will no longer be my portion. It will no longer plague my family line in Jesus' name. Say, I renounce self-hatred, self-sabotage, people-pleasing in the name of Jesus. Say, every personality that is not the personality of the Holy Spirit, say, leave now. Leave now in Jesus' name. Say, I receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Say, there's a champion in me, and it is Jesus and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In Jesus' name, say, Holy Spirit, break me free. My children, my family on each side of my mother and father, break us free from generational, hereditary, and bloodline curses associated with witchcraft, lust, sex addiction, pornography. Say, break me free. Say, leave now in Jesus' name. Say, today, I receive my freedom through the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. And say, Lord, if there's anyone that I left out, I forgive them. I release them. Say, I renounce self-sabotage. And from this point on, I will go forth. I renounce fear. Fear of success. Fear of doing business. Fear of entrepreneurship. Say, I renounce it. And today, I break free from every enslavement. Say, all pain in my bones. Leave now. In the name of Jesus, say, you cannot stay. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. It's bought and paid for with a price. Say, take your hands off of my body. In the name of Jesus, I should be whole. I should be healed. In Jesus' name, say amen. amen. Now let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. All right. So we're going to open the altar. And if it's, if it's anything that, yeah, let it all come out. It's okay. Yeah, let, get your breakthrough. Let it all come out. And if you need help, come to the altar. All right. Listen to me closely. All you have to lose is your demons. And it's time to give them up tonight, right now. He's in holy territory and holy ground, and they can't stay. So if you want us to pray for you, I'm going to ask, my, uh, thank you too. Let me give my team a hand clap of praise. They're going to help me. God bless all of you. Thank you for coming. Amen. But if it's you on the night or if you haven't received Christ, or you maybe came to Christ and you're struggling, you strayed away. Listen, it's time to come home. Why would you serve that foul, ugly devil, that coward, that bully, and go to hell with him? If it is you, I want you to come to this altar. You know you need to get your life right with Christ. If it's anyone here that have strayed away, I want you to run to this altar because it's deliverance time. You know that you're not in the right place. And listen, being raised in the church don't mean that you grew. Oh, I grew up in church, but you didn't grow. Uh-huh. Amen. So being exposed to the church doesn't mean anything if it is you. I want you to come. I want you to get out of that seat. I want you to come to this altar. You need to come to Christ. Listen, we can preach and teach, but the main thing is souls. 
Jesus is concerned about souls. Listen, if we don't win souls, we have nobody to deliver or heal. So if that's you and you've strayed away, I want you to come on to the altar. I'm going to give it a few minutes. Every head bow, every eye closed. And if it's you, I want you to just stick your hand up or come to this altar if, if you know it's you. If everybody is saved, praise God. We're just going to pray for you. But if it's you, I want you to come to this altar. Come on home to Jesus. Listen, why would you serve a devil that can't even repent? His, devil, his destiny is set. He can't repent, but you can. Amen. God bless you, my sister. Praise God. Anybody else? Heads down.